Hello and welcome to the findyourflow.tv show. My name is Winston and I'm here today with a very special episode. Today's episode is Harmony Part 2. And this is going to use the piano today or the keyboard. Last time we used the guitar, but we're going to be talking about harmony just the same. It's going to be awesome. You're going to love it. I really appreciate you being here, friend. Thank you so much. So let's jump right into it. Harmony is two or, no, two or more notes played at the same time. So if we're playing just one note, this is C, and we're going to be looking at C. If How do we tell which one is C? All right, let's pretend we're brand new. Some of us are brand new on the, the show today. So if we have two black ones here, three black ones, two, three, two, three. See that? There's a group of three, two, three, two, and it just repeats all the way down and up the keyboard. In between any two of the black notes, that note is a D. So we can always easily find a D, right? D and D, and if we go down C, This is C. C. Can't go that low. Okay, and it just repeats. So C, D, E, F, G. And then after G, it repeats. And we start over at A. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. 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 A, B, C, until we're out of keys. All right, and even if you have a short keyboard, it's okay, it might only be an octave. It might be an octave and a half, or it might be eight octaves. It could be really a big keyboard. So that's the basics of how we tell which key is which, okay? And we're gonna be playing primarily in the key of C just to keep it nice and easy. And that means we're gonna be using pretty much only the white keys for your today's episode as we get a little bit more advanced and learn about some of the other keys we'll learn how to use some of the sharps and flats these are called sharps and flats okay so for today again we're just using mostly the white keys so to talk about harmony we're going to be using two notes at the same time and we're going to be using a major third okay that's the distance from this note c up to e and you'll notice all I'm really doing, the simple way to look at this, is I'm just skipping a note in the middle, okay? And if I skip one more note, I get another third. But this is actually not a major third. This one is called a minor third. So we don't want to get too hung up on that just yet. But here's how this sounds if we play all three together. Is that nice? You've probably heard that many, many times before. This is called a major chord. Major triad. Tri means three so if we have three notes in our chord we call that a triad and this is a c major triad because c is in the root so c e g sing it with me c e g again c e g pretty neat all right that is our c major chord now what if we want to play another chord well one thing i want to share with you is our hand position for playing chords we need three notes if we're going to be playing triads and if i were to relax my fingers on the keyboard so that each instead of like this when we're new sometimes our fingers don't want to cooperate and they fly off the keyboard and they're kind of awkward like and it's hard to keep them down as we get better, as we practice, we want to relax our hand and we want to rest it on the keyboard, okay? Nice and smooth. See that? Okay, so at first I want to just play these two notes, my C and my E, with my thumb and my middle finger. And it gives me a nice major third. And you maybe have heard something like this before. Ever heard that? Ding dong, major third, ding dong, doorbell. 
right? Doorbells sound like that. Ding dong. So anytime you hear that, if you want to super impress your friends, hey, that's a major third. Surely you'll impress them with that kind of knowledge. All right, now if we sing like this, we call this an arpeggio. One, three, five, three, one, C, E, G, E, C, Do, Mi, So, Mi, Do. It's all different ways of saying the same thing. Now if I take this shape, and I'm gonna make a claw. This is my claw, okay? And if I keep my claw shape perfect, I can just simply move the shape up one note, each finger moves up one note, and I've got a new shape, I've got the same shape, but I'm playing a new chord. Now I'm playing a D minor chord. If I move all my fingers up one shape again, and if I keep that same position, now I'm playing an E minor chord. And if I play each note up again, I've got an F major chord. You don't have to memorize this yet, but if you do, it will help you a lot. So F, right? And then I just move up to G, which is a major chord, G major chord. If I move up again, I'm playing an A minor chord. A little sadder sounding is how we describe the minor chords. If I move up again, ooh, B half diminished, oh my gosh. Very tension-oriented chord. And then we resolve it up to the C major chord. C major, same as this one, just an octave higher. Okay, so one thing that really helps with this, and I gotta switch hands, my hand's getting tired of holding the camera, is that I'm keeping that claw shape. And if it's difficult, which it is difficult at times, at the beginning especially, it can be very difficult to keep that hand shape. So I'm gonna teach you a little ninja tip here, a little trick. If I have a pencil, this is not a pencil, but if I had a pencil, I could use a pencil, and say I'm gonna use a drumstick, and I'm gonna put my middle finger, I'm gonna hold it like this. Can you see that? My middle finger goes underneath, and I got my pointer and my ring finger on top, and I got my uh, pinky and thumb underneath. And what this can help me do is to hold that claw position that we talked about earlier. See that? And then I can just practice sliding my hand up and down. Doesn't that sound cool? Whoa, right? And that's all I'm doing. I'm just making that claw position and I'm just moving the whole shape. I'm keeping my fingers the same distance apart. That's really important. That will help you a lot when you're, when you're learning this. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so that's my main chord structure that we're gonna be using for a while here. And in the last episode, if you saw the first episode of Harmony, we also broke it down into rhythm. And some people don't realize that rhythm and harmony are actually deeply connected, very deeply connected, okay? So I want to talk a little bit about that today again because we're gonna we're gonna break this down. So this is three beats against two beats. Let's make sure I'm getting that on the camera there. Yeah, I think so. All right, beat one and beat two. Beat one and beat two. Okay, these are quarter notes. And up here, I've got three quarter notes. One, two, three. And you'll notice this one lines up. This one and this one do not line up. They're not vertically in the same line. This one comes a little bit, if I was reading it this way, this one, number two on top, comes a little bit before beat number two. And beat three is off here kind of in the middle of what would be the next beat. So these don't exactly line up. And what we have here is three beats against two beats. We call this a polyrhythm. So we have one frequency. A frequency is how many times does something happen? in a given period of time. So we're gonna pretend this is our period of time. And we may even be able to go pro here. Oh, no, we don't wanna do that. What do we wanna do? Uh, let's do this. All right, this is kind of an annoying, really annoying metronome, but we'll work with what we got. So I'll set this for 90 beats per minute. And metronomes, even though they might be a little bit annoying, 
are actually super awesome for music practice, okay? They really, really are important. And there's a lot of fun things we can do with them. So today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna learn to march a little bit. We're gonna march and learn to sing and tie this into harmony. Now, why, why did I pick three against two? Let's turn that off, because that is really annoying. Okay, the reason we're doing three beats against two beats is because when we're making harmony, so we've already talked a little bit about our major third. That's how nice that sings. Now, if there's if you and a friend are here watching this show together, you, we can actually sing both of these. We can have one friend sing this. Mm, si or do, do. And then we could have our other friend sing this. Mi, do, mi. And what's really fun is when you're singing, you have vocal cords that go through here and air pushes through. Ooh, and these vocal cords actually vibrate. Just like if I were to play this bass, you'll notice that that string is vibrating. And that causes the air to vibrate and that goes to our ears and we hear that as sound. Well, you have vocal cords that are kind of like this inside your neck, we all do, right? And when we sing or talk even, those vibrate just like these strings do. And that causes the air molecules to vibrate into waves and that's picked up by your ear, we hear sound. That's how sound works, right? So this note, C or Do, is vibrating at a certain frequency and when we sing it, we are actually vibrating at that very same frequency. Isn't that neat? It's pretty neat. And if you're vibrating at this and your friend is vibrating at this, you're vibrating in harmony. Isn't that cool? Yes, it really is happening that way at the physical level. It's pretty amazing. Okay, so that's a major third. Now, in our triad, we actually played this third note too. This is the fifth. Root third, fifth of our triad. If we play just these, it's the root mm, five, one, five. And you'll hear me, I switch between musical languages pretty fluently. And the more of these videos that you tune into, the easier this will become for you, depending on you know what level of music theory you're at and skill. So these are some pretty useful concepts that I've picked up over the years that can hopefully help you as well. So we've got C and G. C, D, E, F, G, C, one, two, three, four, five, one. This is a very important note in this scale, the five. And the relationship, we talked, remember, about a little bit about frequency. And in the last episode, we talked more about frequency. So each of these is vibrating at a certain speed. And if we slowed them way, 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 way down, we would actually be able to hear the notes what we call beats so it'd be like maybe and if we started to play c faster or i'm sorry we started to play that beat so fast eventually it would just sound like a note so it would be like it sounds like one continuous note but really if we slowed it way down it would actually sound like just a pulse okay same thing with all these notes if we slow them down enough so that's kind of a big part of this idea with music and rhythm is that what we're really doing when we hear harmony, and Bella wants to share her input on this. Thank you, Bella. Um, this is her favorite part. When we slow down harmony enough, what we actually have is rhythm. That's the secret here, that, that, the underlying secret here. Bella loves it. She's so excited. Okay, Bella, Bella wants us to do a quick little plug here. So uh, if you're looking for a little pick-me-up, Find your flow essential oils. I don't know why I just, let's just put put some in so we can maybe calm Bella down. She's over there. Bella, thank you for your input. So we're just gonna add a little bit of this. This is essential oil. And we have different flavors. If you go to finderflow.com forward slash shop, I'm just gonna add a drop Beep. to our little uh, essential oil thing there. And we'll put that right up there. Okay. Okay. A little plug there. Finderflow.com forward slash shop. If you want any essential oils, pick me up. We have some other neat flavors too. We have tea if you like tea and coffee. All right. Enough of that. 
So now we've got our major fifth. C, G, C, G. Okay. The relationship, mathematically, some of you may be into the maths. The relationship, mathematical relationship between this note and this note is three, two. Three vibrations of this one, three pulses of this one for every two pulses of this one. Okay, that's the mathematical relationship. If we slowed it way down, you would hear it and it would look something like this if we wrote it out in musical notes. So let's learn a little bit about how to actually play that. Even if we don't have a keyboard, how can we do this? Okay, this is super fun. So we are going to learn how to do three against two, three against two beats. So we're gonna do these two bottom notes two beats with our feet. So this is gonna be left foot and then right foot. So one, two, one, two. And if we step and kind of really get our bodies into it, this will be a lot easier, okay? We don't have to think about it as much, especially if this is new to you, okay? So left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, one, two, one, two. Okay, that's the idea. We're gonna keep that going. And then these top notes, one, two, three, we are going to clap. So we're gonna clap those notes over the top. Okay, so it's gonna be a little bit. One, two. So on number one, we're gonna both step with our left foot and clap. Okay, so that happens at the same time. But you'll notice before our right foot steps back down, we have to fit in a quick clap with number two. Okay, how's that sound? It's gonna sound a little bit something like this. One, a two. Did you hear that? So if I got one, two, one, two, and I start clapping, one, a two. That's what it should feel like, okay? It's a little bit of a quick little, uh, we call it the uh if we're looking for, for subdividing our beat. One E and a two E and a 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 Okay, so I kind of just went for it. Hopefully you started to hear how this comes together. So this clap is on one, this clap is on a, uh, this clap is on and. So if it's one e and a, uh, two e and a, uh, one e and a, uh, two e and a, uh. okay? And there's a little trick that we learn in music that makes this a little easier to say sometimes or a little easier to play. It goes like this. Pass the butter. Pass the but ah. Pass the butter. Pass the butter. Pass the butter. Pass the butter. Okay? Pass the butter. That's it. It's really a fun thing to say and play. And we want to get good at this, and, and you could be standing up to march it. So I'm sitting down just to try to fit this on the camera. But let's try to play it. <coughs> I'm going to tap it this time just to try to keep it keep it on the camera here. Bella, thank you so much for your input. Appreciate it. So we're going to go one, a two, and no, this is not going to work if I try to do it like that. All right. Let me go... Bella, you don't, I know you want to be on camera, Bella. Not enough for you. Thank you. All right. So one, a two, and one, a two, and one, a two, and one, a two, and one, a two, and, one, a two, and. that's it. All right. And if we're marching, we can really get it in our body. 
which is the best way to do it. We want to get this in our body. We want to get it so it's natural. We don't have to think too hard about it. Let's see if we can try to get a better angle. Let me see if I can shush my cat. Ah. Shh. Be quiet. Be quiet. Thank you. Thank you. It's not your turn to be on camera right now. It's not her turn. She gets a little frustrated. She wants to be on camera too. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, keep that going. If you just need to do that for a while to really get it in your body and system and feelings, do it. One, a two, and one, a two, and one, a two, and one. A two and one, a two and one, a two and pass the butter, pass the butter, pass the butter. All right, hopefully, you got that. So, that's the rhythm, okay? The rhythm and the harmony is that, but if we just sped it up really fast. <laughs> One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. So if you want to take it to the next level, once you start flowing, and you've got this part nice and slow. And you can keep it slow while you're doing the counting. One, two, one, two. Practice counting these steps right the one and the two and then keep the same rhythm going and then switch to counting the three okay so i'll do it again a little bit slower so one two three four one two one two one two one two switch okay one Two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now I've still got the two going, right? That's my main beat. But I'm doing a polyrhythm, poly meaning more than one, multiple, multiple rhythms at the same time. And you get this very magical feeling. This is really fun. This is a great way to get into flow states. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one two three so i'm counting the three while i'm still holding down the two and i want to get to the point where i can switch my counting i can count the two and feel the two is the main pulse or i can switch and count the three is the main pulse now this is the three to two mathematical ratio and if we were to speed it up eventually it would get so fast it would just sound like it sound like this it's a major, it's a major third, uh, perfect fifth, sorry. Perfect fifth. One, five. And there's all sorts of music that starts with, this is a very open, powerful, strong sound in music. Okay. So all sorts of openings. Right? That start with that one five open sound. And if we're singing it together, we're mm, do so. All right. Pretty cool. Pretty fun. And if we add our third, now we give it a nice major third sound. Okay. So we've covered a lot today, and we're going to go into more about using harmony and chord function in some of the upcoming episodes. And I really appreciate you being here for this. I hope you are experiencing more harmony already in your life and in everything that you do, friend. And if you have questions or you want to uh, connect or reach out or learn more, you can email me, winston at findyourflow.com, and I will get back to you as quick as I can. Again, you can find things like essential oils and books and tapes and things to make your whole life more flowing and harmonious. So you can go to findyourflow.com forward slash shop for any of that kind of stuff. Thank you, friend. I hope you had fun. We're going to learn more about these chords and more about harmony in some of the upcoming episodes. So please subscribe to this channel. 
tell your friends, share it, like it. I really appreciate it. Get the word out. Let's cause more harmony, create more harmony out there in the world using music and sound and rhythm and fun. So thanks again, friend. Be flowing. Until next time, my friend, be flowing. Thanks so much. Take care. Have a great day. Thank you.